February, March 2020, Paper 2, Variant 2. Question 1. Group 2 metals form alkaline solutions in water. Okay, A part 1. Write the equations uh, between the calcium oxide and water. So calcium oxide with water form calcium hydroxide. No gas form. Just one compound. Okay, part 2. Identify the ion that causes aqueous solution to be alkaline. So of course it's hydroxide. Okay, hydroxide is the one that is responsible for the this alkaline solution. Okay, part B. Uh, this table shows that the melting point of magnesium oxide is the highest. And uh, when it's down the group, the melting point is decreases. So this is the trend. When down the group, why it decreases? Why it becomes a, a lower melting point? It's because the charge density. So you can explain this uh, part using the charge density. Okay, so what is charge density? So imagine when down the group, the group 2 cation size is larger, right? So like uh, magnesium ion and barium ion. Their size different, but the charge is still the same. So it's two positive. So we know that magnesium ion size is smaller, but the charge is still two positive. That's why we know that the charge density of magnesium ion is actually higher than the others. So you can explain using charge density. Okay, volume smaller, but same charge. So when the charge density is higher, the attractions of this ion to the, the other anion is stronger. Means magnesium ion has a stronger attractions with the oxide. Okay, that's why melting point is highest. Okay, so you just need to know that when down the group, more electron shell size larger, attraction is weaker. Attractions between the cations and anions weaker. Right, so this is what you need to explain. Melting point decreases down the group as the attraction between the cations and the oxide means the group 2 cation and the oxide get weaker. Why weaker? Because the charge density of this cation is decreases. Part C. Oxygen reacts readily with some metals. Okay, but uh, each group 2 metals requires strong heating in order to start the reaction with oxygen. So the reaction heats means it's going to involve a high activation energy or it's going to overcome the activation energy. So the heat that uh, provided okay, is to overcome this activation energy. Once it's overcome, it will start to react. Okay, part D, given beryllium oxide uh, reacts with the HCl, okay, form this BeCl2. Deduce the bond angle of BeCl2. First, we need to know uh, what is the groups for this beryllium. Beryllium is group 2, so 2 valence electron. And this two valence electron is going to share with the two chlorine atoms and you'll form these molecules. So we know that beryllium is the uh, central atom and it has two bonding pair. And these two bonding pair, it will have a maximum repulsion and the bond angle is 180. Of course, the geometry or the shape is linear. So answer is 180 degree. Okay, part E. Unlike the others oxide of group 2 metals, beryllium oxide is amphoteric. Okay, so what it means by amphoteric? Very easy. The species that reacts with both acid and base or alkaline. Okay, part 2. Beryllium oxide and aluminum oxide behave very similar. 
uh, when they react. The, uh, this is the anions that form when the beryllium oxide is, uh, reacts with the concentrated hydroxide. Okay, so which means in order to give this uh, equation, you have to recall what you learn in the aluminum oxide okay, with hydroxide. When aluminum oxide reacts with sodium hydroxide, it needs water. And if we try to uh, just use the hydroxide, means without the sodium, so it's going to be this equation. Means it's Al2O3, 2 hydroxide, okay, 3H2O, and you form 2 AlOH4, okay, negative. So means you have, you just need to substitute the elements. Means instead of aluminium, now you put beryllium. But you have to be be careful because beryllium is group two, aluminium is group thirteen. Therefore, beryllium oxide the formula is different from the aluminium oxide. Aluminium oxide is Al2O3, beryllium oxide is BeO. Okay, BeO react with the same thing hydroxide and water form this anion BeOH42 negative. Okay, so you just balance it, you get this equation. Okay, it's actually similar to the this equation. Okay, part F. Magnesium oxide reacts with the chlorine and form uh, equilibrium. So you have to beware of the state. Magnesium oxide is solid. Chlorine is gas. Magnesium chloride solid. Oxygen gas. Later we're going to use this one for the calculation. Okay, under certain conditions, a dynamic equilibrium is established. So state two features of the reaction that is in dynamic equilibrium. Very easy. Dynamic means always moving continuously. Means the rate for the forwards and backwards must be the same. So means rate for the forwards and the backwards, it must be the same. Right? It's always continuously moving. And another features it must have is in order to form equilibrium, it must have closed system, which means the container or the the reaction vessel it must be a closed system. Then all the particles will not escape from this container. Or another features that could be is concentration constant, not equal but constant. When it's rich equilibrium concentration of the reactants and products there must be a constant therefore it can form the KC or KP okay in part 2 this one the equilibrium constant is given by this expression okay, so KP is equal to partial pressure of oxygen over partial pressure of chlorine squared and for this one you need to calculate what is the KP expressions already given in order to calculate KP, you need to do a few uh, steps or you need to calculate a few things. Okay, first, you need to know how to calculate partial pressure. We calculate partial pressure using this. Okay, example, if we want to get a partial pressure of chlorine, we must use the mole fraction of the chlorine. So what is mole fraction? Is the mole of chlorine over the total mole of the gas in the equilibrium. Okay, this one times the total pressure. So you get partial pressure of chlorine. Okay, so in this part, first you need to identify or you need to get what is the moles of chlorine and oxygen at equilibrium. Okay, so just follow the question. Given the total pressure is this one, 1 times 10 power 5 Pascal. Temperature is given. Okay, but this temperature we're not going to use for, for the calculation. Uh, just uh, temperature for this reaction. 
or this equilibrium. Okay, 70% of initial amount of chlorine has reacted. So this is the key. 70%. So which means, let's say, let's say, initially it started with one mole. If one mole of chlorine used, 70% means it's going to minus 0 0.7. So means at equilibrium, chlorine will just remain 0 0.3. And we know that initial mole of oxygen is 0 because still not yet formed. But when it's changed, it must change with the ratio of chlorine. Means two chlorine or two moles of chlorine form one mole of oxygen. When 0 0.7 mole of chlorine used then oxygen will just form half of it so because they are two to one ratio so we know that when this one is minus 0 0.7 this one must be positive 0 0.35 half of that okay then at equilibrium we know the most of the c cl2 and the o2 then we just sum up these two we get the total mole these two which is 0 0.65 Okay, then we can get the mole fraction of chlorine, 0 0.3 over 0 0.65. Mole fraction of oxygen, 0 0.35 over 0 0.65. Okay, once you get this, then you can substitute this mole fraction into this. Right, so means the mole fractions times total pressure, you get partial pressure of chlorine. Okay, so which is this one? Sorry, which is this one? Okay, chlorine, uh, 0 0.3 over 0 0.65 okay, times total pressure. This is a partial pressure of chlorine squared. Here, this part, squared. Then do the same thing for oxygen, 0 0.35 over 0 0.65 times the total pressure. And the unit is very easy because here is square, right? So partial pressure of chlorine squared. So it's Pascal square, and here is Pascal, so it's end up with per Pascal. Okay, so what after you calculate, you should get 2.53 times 10 power negative 5. Okay, Pascal negative 1. Okay, part G. Magnesium peroxide is made in the following reaction. Okay, this magnesium oxide with H2O2 from this magnesium peroxide and H2O. Okay, delta H is given, which is negative uh, 96. Okay, we're going to use all this info later. Okay, part one. The peroxide ion is this O22 negative. So, deduce the average oxidation number of oxygen. Very easy. So, the charge is negative 2. There, there are two oxygens. So negative 2 over 2, you get negative 1. Okay, so answer is negative 1. Okay, part 2. Define the terms NW change of formation. Okay, very easy. NW change when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements. And these elements, it must in their standard state. Under standard condition. This is a very easy definition. Make sure it's one mole of compound form from its elements and these elements must in their standard state. Okay, part three. Use the data given calculate the enthalpy change formation of this magnesium peroxide. Okay, magnesium peroxide is this. So we're going to use the, because delta HF given, so we just use the uh, delta H equal to delta uh, HF of the products minus the delta HF of reactants. Okay, which is this one. So this one is delta HR, the reaction. So it's given negative 96 equal to the delta HF of the products. Okay, this one, they are products. And this one is a reactant. So we use, okay, because product is a peroxide and H2O. So we have to substitute the H2O, this one, and that will change the formation of H2O in there. And we have to substitute 
the formations of the two reactants into the this equation. So rearrange, you should get this. Delta HF for the magnesium peroxide is negative 600 kJ per mole. Okay, part 4. Magnesium peroxide decomposes slowly to form magnesium oxide and oxygen. Okay, follow this equation. You should answer in the uh, part 3 and the data in the table. Calculate NW change of this reaction. Very easy. Okay, so again, we use the delta HF of product minus reactant. Elements, we will not really include that. So for the re products, okay, so magnesium oxide again. From the table, formation of magnesium oxide is negative 602. So in this equation, this is a product. So negative 602 minus, okay, this is the one that just calculated, minus negative 600. So you get negative 2 kJ per mole. Okay, that's the answer. That's all. Thank you.